welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back to Real Estate Coaching Radio. We are your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Julie, welcome to today's radio show. Thank you so much. As always, it's my pleasure to be here. So the topic of today's show, everyone, is live a fear-free life, five steps to overcoming your fears. And this will probably end up being a two-part show. Julie and I have written a lot of very specific notes. And these notes and the points we're going to be giving you are very practical things that you can literally be putting into action today, taking action now to see, in many cases, instant results. This is not anything that no, – this is something that everyone can do. This is something uh, that we'll hopefully explain to you in such a way that it will be easily digestible and practical to apply. So before I get to um, today's topic, we have a few um, announcements, and these are great announcements that – Uh, Frankly, we have all of you, our listeners, 50,000 strong to thank. Number one, of course, is thanking you uh, all for making us the industry's number one listen to radio show. So thanks. I mean, you helped us accomplish our goal. It's kind of funny. We started out the year stating that we wanted to have at least 50,000 listeners by the end of the year, and we have. And now I suspect that next year we'll go um, over 100,000. So thank you for all of you. Thanks sincerely to all of you for helping make that specific goal a reality. Number two, I want to announce that we have a new book club. Now, this is something that all of you guys have been asking us about. I get a, con- a lot of emails from uh, listeners and from coaching students, and those of you who are thinking about coaching, uh, becoming coaching students, and you're asking me about what books we're reading, what books you should be reading you know, to overcome this challenge or to forward your business or your personal life in some other way. So I thought this time of year, really any time of year, the perfect book is a book by Napoleon Hill called Think and Grow Rich. Now, Julie and I re-released Think and Grow Rich. Uh, In other words, we've published Think and Grow Rich, but it's sold out on Amazon, so it's out of print now. So what I'm going to do to make it easy for you to join our book club, and every month we're going to be doing a different book in the book club, is I'm going to be, uh, for the most part, giving you guys the books. In other words, removing excuses for you not to participate in the book book club. So what we're going to do is, um, in uh, today's show description, and I'm looking at it right now, there's a link. Click on it. Download the book. Now, the cool thing about this book is we've uh, updated it, and we've uh, edited it a little bit. Uh, We've left all Napoleon Hill's writings as they were, because there's really, you know, I think it would be almost uh, wrong to edit any of his stuff. But what we did is we made it for real estate. So the beginning part of the book is a very comprehensive business plan. Jules, can you tell them about the business plan? Yes, the business plan is also known as the treasure map because it is your map to real estate treasure. This is starting with the end in mind, and we're forcing you to think about what you want in terms of goals, not just to keep the lights on and pay your bills. Nobody gets into real estate to do that. It's so that you can live the life of your dreams. And many of you will be surprised that it doesn't take a million, two million, five, ten million dollars like you guys like to answer that question, what's it going to take for you to live the life of your dreams? Actually, for most people, it takes an, some incremental changes and maybe a 20, 30, 50% increase in business. So the treasure map is designed to start with the end in mind and recalibrate you back to why you got into real estate in the first place and help you set specific, obtainable goals and get you there. It's pretty exciting. Tim. So it is. So we are, I'm going to make it super easy for all of you guys to get a free copy of Think and Grow Rich and your business plan. Um, you can either click the link in the description or you can email me directly, coachtimharris at gmail.com. That's coachtimharris at gmail.com. And I'll have someone from our team send you out um, a copy of the book right away. So again, we're going to be doing a different book um, every month. And I'll tell you what next month's going to be. Uh, it's going to be The uh, Power of Thinking Big by Dr. David Schwartz. So that's going to be the book we're going to be focusing on the following month. So it was interesting. What inspired today's radio show was a survey that In the News Features uh, put out uh, polling realtors why they hire real estate coaches and what specifically they look for in real estate coaches. And it was interesting. The journalist was surprised, it seems, that so many of you guys hire real estate coaches to overcome fears. Well, I'll, you know, it was, I think, it wasn't number one, but it was like the top five reasons. But I'd go as far as to suggest to you 
that it is the number one reason that people hire coaches, uh, especially business coaches, real estate coaches, is because we do have fears. Uh, and then if you can obviously have someone help you overcome those fears, you'll that, again, opens up the door for you being more receptive to new ways of running your business. You know, if you really drill down on what fear is, and that's what we're going to do on today's radio show and probably tomorrow's radio show, uh, and if you really kind of take it from a perspective that it's voluntary, in other words, you don't have to fear the, feel the fears that you are, it really does change your perspective on what you're capable of accomplishing in life. So, Julie, we have a lot of notes to share with these guys, a lot of things, sure. a lot of stories, I think a lot of experiences from our own personal coaching schedule. Um, before we get to that, anything else you'd like to announce or anything else you'd like to say to our loyal listeners, um, maybe some experiences from your own coaching schedule? Well, I I think that this topic can affect everything that you do in real estate. If you just break it down, it's maybe fear of success, fear of failure. There's lots of different manifestations of this. So what I would say to all of our listeners, Tim, is that this is a really important, critical topic to get in front of and to really be introspective about and ask yourself how this affects you. When was the last time you felt this way? And what control are you getting over it? Because you can change how you feel about fear. You can change this happening to you. This may be the thing standing in your way between where you are now and where you want to be. So what are your thoughts on that, Tim? Well, I mean, really the bottom line is recognizing the fact that it is probably the thing that's holding you back. It is the reason that you haven't accomplished the goals at the level in which you hope to accomplish. It's the reason that, frankly, so many of you are stuck in the paradigm of only working with buyers and you've convinced yourself that you're, you know, maybe subconsciously in a lot of ways, you've convinced yourself that you're not ready to be a listing agent. It's the reason that you probably are, you know, not accomplishing the things in life that you want to accomplish in terms of your financial goals. So normally this is where we take a commercial break, but frankly, we have a lot of ground to cover today. And this is really, I think, Probably some of the most critical information that we can share with you as real estate coaches is really how to overcome your fears. So, Julie, why don't you jump right uh, right in on uh, the top sure. of today's notes? You got it. So, in life, we experience two kinds of fear. There's real fear, and then there's psychological fear, or as we prefer to think of the latter, what we would call ego fear. So, the author Eckhart Tolle calls it quote the voice in the head. It isn't who you really are, but it's the you that you think you are. So try to become aware of that voice. Listen to yourself and notice the thoughts that make you feel any of the following. Skeptical, distrustful, fearful. You may be saying to yourself things like, thoughts like, I've heard this before, tell me something new. Or, I can do all this myself, I don't need to change. Those types of thoughts. But if you can look within yourself, almost like a coach watching your listing presentation for areas where you can improve, you will actually notice when these ego-based fears are starting to manifest. When the ego fear is in the driver's seat, you are in a set, in essence allowing a filter to come in the way between you and your intentions. So consider the fact that each day what you see in the mirror is the reflection of your physical being. Your present physical, mental, emotional, and financial state are a direct reflection of what you know, and more importantly, at what level you choose to apply what you know. So the reflection of your physical body is a mirror into the thoughts and the actions you did. And we see this a lot in coaching, Tim, the actual actions that you did or perhaps didn't take yesterday and the days before. So thoughts and intentions have no value without the action. That's where probably we should pause on the thought of massive action and what a difference that makes. Back to you, Tim. Well, so let's talk about that for a second, right? Mm-hmm. So the reflection sure. as you look in the mirror, it's, it's a very practical way of thinking about this, really. We're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to introduce you guys to the fact that the fear you feel in your business is psychological, ego-based fear. That's really the point of today's show. You need to realize uh, and then come to appreciate the fact that the, the fears that you're having inside of you that are holding you back from success – they're just between your ears. They're not actual. They're not things to truly be scared of. So we're giving you some examples here to trying to get you guys to open up your minds. Now we have to be very careful in how we present information like this because I know a lot of you guys are naturally skeptical. I get that. And I appreciate that because guess what? So am I. I mean, when I hear something, I try to like my my immediate reaction when I hear something, especially something new or you know at least something newish, is my immediate reaction is one of a skeptic. But So I've learned that that skeptic 
is basically my fear ego-based mechanism uh, uh, stepping in. So when I physically fear uh, feel, when I physically feel that fear skeptic mechanism starting to manifest inside of myself, because I've learned to look for it, and this is what we're suggesting all of you guys do too, because I've learned to look for it, I can stop it from continuing. So if I can feel that inner skeptic starting to manifest, and my inner skeptic, trust me when I tell you, is really strong, and I know now from having you know, studied this stuff for a long time and coached literally thousands of realtors on this very topic, I know now that if I can squelch that inner uh, skeptic from manifesting, in other words, becoming the most prominent thought in my head, running everything through a skeptic's lens, then if I can do that, then I basically open my mind up to the fact that there are so many more opportunities and things for me to learn. It's, again, all of us have these little mechanisms that kick in place. So the mirror analogy. So what's the idea with that? When you look at yourself in the mirror, you know, you take off all your clothes, you look at yourself in the mirror, that is a direct reflection. It's kind of interesting, maybe a little bit too raw for a lot of us, but it's a direct reflection on the decisions that you made uh, yesterday and the day before and the lifetime before, right? It's a direct reflection on the decisions you made to exercise to not to exercise, to do this with your body versus that with your body. See that tattoo that's over on your arm that looked really cool 20 years ago? Not so good now, is it? So it's interesting that we have that same ability to do the same introspection on all aspects of our lives. And since we're business coaches, right, we focus on finances. So when you look at your, when you hold your, essentially your finances in the mirror, what's reflecting back are the decisions that you made previously manifesting today. Understanding that those decisions are what led to what you're experiencing today, that is very powerful to embrace because that means that it's a choice Nothing was done to you. So going back to the physical, uh, you're looking at yourself in the mirror thing. Nobody fed you the pie and the cake and the pizza and the beer and the other things. Or hopefully nobody held you down and gave you that strange tattoo, right? The reality of it is, is those are things that you chose to do to yourself. Your finances are the same way. Your real estate business is the same way. Your personal life and your personal experience, that's the same way. Those are your choices. So if you accept the fact that basically you can choose now going forward how you will look in the mirror, you know, personally, financially, or physically, however you want to, you know, think of it to carry this analogy forward. That if you now have the ability to shape how what that reflection will look like, you know, a year from now, ten years from now, that's a pretty amazingly profound thing because you realize that okay, I am responsible for, I own the experience that I'm having now. That means I can own. And I can somewhat control the experience that I'll have going forward. You guys, if you think about that, and if you just internalize and accept it, it's liberating. It will release a ton of stress and pressure and also starts in disengaging that ego-based fear. So, Jules, where were we? Well, so to take this to what to do about it, well, if you don't like your current physical state, and that might be your financial state, your emotional state, or literally your physical state, it might be time for massive action. If you don't like that, take massive action to do something about it. And realize that we all have labels, we have roles to play. There are different places in your life where you apply this to different levels. We're all different players, friends, lovers, parents, children, worker, boss, all, and of course, trusted real estate advisor or realtor. So you play different roles just like you were playing different parts in the same movie. These are different selves that we pick each day as needed. So think about how many times per day you've got to shift from being the loving parent to the skilled real estate agent and maybe even go home then and take care of an elderly parent. You're doing lots of things. You're wearing lots of hats. So open your mind to the idea that these are merely roles that you play in life on a daily and weekly basis. So just like your reflection in the mirror, those roles are not who you actually are. You're a spiritual being in physical form, so have an open mind to what we're sharing with you regarding fear. We know from having coached literally thousands of agents that there is a formula to overcoming fear. Once you learn this process, you'll no longer be burdened by the psychological ego-based fear. So, Tim, what is real fear? We're talking about psychological fear versus real fear. I mean, sort that out for them. Well, just the acceptance that there are two different kinds of fears, I suppose if someone really wanted to study this, there's more than that. But for the sake of what we do, Julie, helping agents mm -hmm. build their real estate businesses and make money, I mean, there really are, it comes down to two distinct fear, fears. Real fear is the body's natural response to a threat. Feeling fear is an unavoidable natural response. In normal life, we experience 
fear, real fear, guys, so infrequently that we do things uh, to manifest it. We do things to experience it just so we can remember what it feels like, like riding roller coasters, like watching scary movies, maybe driving too fast, you know, just to remember what real fear feels like. So if you can actually think, when was the last time you felt real fear? Hopefully it wasn't any time soon or wasn't too recently. You know, but there are times in your life where you probably genuinely felt real fear. So let's be very clear about what real fear is so we can drill down on what ego-based psychological fear is. Julie? Well, so maybe you just avoided barely getting into a car accident caused by someone else. Your fear mechanism kicks in and you're almost magically pulling off a Michael Schumacher-style driving maneuver to avoid that accident. Well, fear, honest to God, real physical fear kicked in, and it saved your bacon. So that's what we're talking about with real fear. Our bodies instinctively know how to respond in a threatening situation, thanks to thousands of years of evolutionary history. You know this perhaps as the fight-or-flight phenomenon. So for as long as you live, you'll occasionally find yourself in circumstances that necessitate an involuntary automatic response to a real threat. This is normal and natural. But we're talking about real fear on those circumstances. What's psychological fear then? Well, in the real estate business, we often fear situations that are not life-threatening. There is no car accident to avoid. There is no T-Rex trying to eat you. Yet the fear we choose to feel feels just as real as the real fear. That's a tongue twister, but I think you guys <laughs> understand that. So you, you're feeling innately that same, maybe even panic that you did when you avoided that car accident because the fear response is so hardwired into your brain. Most people have no way of keeping their fear in check. They just react. So it's important to understand that the fear that afflicts agents is actually the ego-based fear. So ego-based fear, Tim, or psychological fear is what holds most agents back. Would you agree with that? Well, it definitely is because chances are you're not going to go to a listing presentation and have and open the door and find a T-Rex, you know, trying to eat you. Hopefully okay? not. Hopefully not, right? <laughs> I just had this flash of a caveman <laughs> going on a listing presentation. No, no, no. A caveman going on a listing presentation yeah. trying to list mm -hmm. a cave. I mean, that would be re hey, legitimate you know fear. earn a living. <laughs> that's right. You got to earn a living. That's right. Yeah. I mean, but guys, hopefully you're starting to get in the flow of what we're trying to present to you. Because if you can unplug the ego base, the psychological fear, and you can start realizing that it is not real, it's not really something that's going to adversely affect you unless you choose for it to continue to, that is liberating. Jules? Well, so ego-based fear or psychological fear is what holds you back. It's that fear of shame or feeling embarrassed. Typical things that agents feel fear over are contacting their center of influence. Their ego-based fear mechanism fills their minds with thoughts that go something like this. What will they think of me? Maybe they think I'm desperate for business. That's why I'm calling them. What if I call and they have a negative reaction? What if they don't remember me? Other common ways ego fear manifests itself is in the listing side of things. So on a regular basis, we hear from agents they are focused on being listing agents because they're encumbered by ego-based fears. They say things like, well, gosh, what if I actually do get the listing? Then what? What am I going to do to actually sell it? What do I say to that person? What if the seller argues over price or commission or anything else? What about objections? Those are ego-based fears. Those are not T-Rex fears. It's critical to understand the focus on agents that suffer from this ego-based fear are literally inwardly focused with their intentions. The agent's focus is on themselves. How will I feel if they argue with me? How will I react if this happens, if that happens? Whenever you're driven by that inward focus, you're allowing fear to determine your outcome. And I want to stop on that thought for a second, Tim. I know you hear this on coaching calls. I hear this on coaching calls. You know, letting this kind of ego-based fear control your business, that costs you some money out there. Well, it's, again, the point of today's radio show and probably tomorrow's radio show, maybe the next day's radio show, is going to be opening up your guys' minds to, again, how you can control this. How often are you having thoughts or how often are you actually using personal pronouns? Count every day. Well, count it how in normal conversations when you're talking with folks. 
how often you want to talk about yourself. How often is it that when you're having a conversation with someone, you're literally jumping in on them wanting to talk about your story or tell your side of things? In other words, it, you know, the ego is jumping in running the conversation, or you're not even really listening to them. You're thinking about what you're going to say next. That is your ego manifesting itself. Well, it does the same. That You guys can relate to that. You've all experienced that at some level. That is the exact same ego that's creating these fears inside of you that are standing in the way of you making money. It is very common that agents will absolutely positively not want to do any direct contact with anybody. And that is the root. I, I, I suppose you know, that would be the simple way of explaining the 80-20 rule um, in real estate. But I would suspect that it's more like the 95-5 rule. Whereas that you look at the agents that are actually making the money consistently in this real estate business in our industry, it's because they have an understanding that the results of direct communication, talking with people, is where the business is done. And all the other agents, because they are fearful of, oh my God, what will they think of me? Oh my God, what happens if I call this person and they're mad at me? Oh my God, what if I ask my you know, friend, center of influence, or past client uh, for business and they all of a sudden think I'm destitute? All your mind goes to is me, me, me thoughts, not actually putting in your, uh, your mindset in a place of being of service. And by the way, guys, I'm foreshadowing what we're going to be talking about, but that is one of the easiest and most powerful ways to overcome the fear-based thinking. Uh, we talk about this a lot, and it's because it's very, very powerful, and it's so true. If you shift your mindset to thinking about the person that you're communicating with, that you're trying to help, you will literally not allow the uh, ego to manifest. You literally cannot have a ego-based, fear-based, psychological fear-based mindset um, when you are thinking about the other person. Try it. It's very interesting. A little experiment for all of you. When you're going to, like, let's pretend right now we had to call whatever your greatest fear is a person to call. Let's say it's a for sale by owner or an expired, a center of influence, a past client. And guys, it's not just about calling. It's any kind of communication. Let's say you're going to go to a, a party this weekend and, you know, you have to go up and talk with, you know, five people. That's a challenge your coach gave you, right? Something you wouldn't normally do. You have fear of it. Why? Because you're inward, inwardly focused. You're focused on how you look. You're focused on, does your breath stink? You're focused on, what will I say? You're focused on, what will happen if they reject me? You'll focus, you're focused on, what will they think of me? You see how the mind and fear and ego manifest, and then what happens? You don't do it. You don't make those contacts. You don't, you know, people can say, well, Tim, people that do that kind of thing, they're just more confident. Well, I would suggest to you that the confidence came as a result of understanding that they're at all of our highest and truest purpose on this planet is to be of service to others. Having that mindset, guys, creates more of everything for you. Opportunity, people to help, and wealth. Having the mindset of service. So when you're in those situations, like I just described, or going back to our, for example, if you had to right now call up for sale by owner, you know, a lot of you guys have huge fear of doing that. So you're going to call for sale by owner, and all your, your mind's going to uh, immediately fill full of all the fearful thoughts that maybe the loathsome, loathsome thought, thoughts have kept you from doing that type of work in the past. You can feel those thoughts entering in your head now, can't you? you know, right? I mean, you're feeling them now. We're going to call a for sale by owner. I've got a phone number of a for sale by owner in your market. Right now, we're going to call them. Notice the fear thoughts entering in. Now, at the same time, let the fear thoughts ramble around your head. Now have this thought in your head. Write this down. Post this by your desk. Ready? How can I help you? How can I be of service to you? How can I help you? How can I be of service to you? So when you call that, you know, this is hypothetical, obviously, but if you were to call that for sale by owner and you had as your most prominent thought, and you're obviously using a script, you're using an outline of your call, you know what you're going to say, you're practiced, uh, you have a you know, conversational outline, so you're not going to be caught off guard, you're not going to be caught by surprise, and you, then you shift your mindset away from the me and the I thoughts, the ego thoughts, and you're refocusing those on being of service to other people, you literally cannot have the ego thoughts floating around in your mind at the same time that you're focusing on helping the other person, truly being of service to the other person. It's an interesting little epiphany if you allow yourself to experience it. Um, again, in real life, just do it. Have, a, have some fun with this and realize then, because as soon as you have that experience, as soon as you see that it was the ego that was holding you back from making those contacts, at that very moment, you see your ego. You're looking at it. You're feeling it. You're realizing that it's not you, that it's separate from you. So, Jules, let's get back. Yeah, so 
remember that you're not ever going to overcome real fear. You shouldn't try to. It saves your bacon when we're talking about real fear. That's you on the freeway. That's you, you know, sensing something might be wrong with you and going to the doctor or dentist because you fear something is up. That's not what we're talking about. Ego fear, though, like we have been discussing on this call with regards to your real estate business, that can be overcome. If living in a place of peace and tranquility is your desire, this is something to work on. And who doesn't desire that? Of course, all of you do. You guys all talk about that all the time. So remember, you can't control that first feeling, that first bubbling up and your first reaction of, oh my gosh, you know, what about me? How's that going to make me feel? that first ego-based fear thought, but you can control every thought that happens after that as long as you recognize that that's what's happening and you say to yourself, hang on a second, I'm feeling ego-based fear. I'm making it about me and what might happen to me, but that's not reality. I've got to get into that place of being of service. And it's interesting for them to see what happens when they get into that you know, being of service, how their businesses transform. Well, you just touch on something that's really an awesome point, because I hear this a lot, too, with our coaching students. I actually had a coaching client, uh, Thomas, if you're listening, I'm thinking about our coaching call from earlier today, and he, he was, you know, we've, I've been coaching him for six months, not long, you know, some of our students we've had, obviously, for years, but he came to the call, and I was really impressed, because he said he actually realized that one of the things that's holding him back is all of this negative self-talk. So on the coaching call, we talked a little bit about what the negative self-talk was, what was actually how it manifested itself. And so what, here's, you know, all of us experience this. This is a very interesting, again, this is, this is all ego-based stuff. But the negative self-talk, all of us have it. All of us have these thoughts that pop into our head. They're just random. So when you have a negative thought that pops in your head, uh, any kind of negative thought, the worst thing you can do or what you should avoid doing is chasing down where it came from. In your mind, if you start trying to think about that negative thought, trying to think why you think that way, trying to think about where that came from, trying to think blah, 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 what happens is you manifest more of it. It's like a seed. Uh, it's a thought seed. And, more, and what you are doing by giving it more thought is you're actually fertilizing that thought seed. And now it's manifesting into something that you really didn't even want. And the crazy thing is, and maybe even quite literally, is those thoughts then can manifest into a whole garden, into a whole forest, and the next thing you know, you're lost in in the forest and you can't see through the trees to get out. So that's what happens a lot of times. We kind of wall ourselves in with these negative thoughts, and they're reinforced everywhere you go, guys. Unfortunately, we live in a society right now, and it hasn't always been this way. I mean, I remember when Julie and I were kids, it wasn't this way, but it is now. Everywhere you go, it's negative. I mean, pretty much every form of media, aside from, say, in the news features, every form of media is going to reinforce negative. Every form of media is going to talk about the doom and the gloom. Every form of media knows that in order to get your attention, they're going to have breaking news, breaking headline. It's going to be some ridiculousness that's designed to feed that negative thought monster inside of you. So one of the exercises that we always suggest to all of our personal coaching students is go media free. Start out by going what we call media free light, right? No media in the morning. Then go media free in the evening. And then go completely media free. I mean literally no media. I, no news. No t- cable TV. No newspaper. No anything that's going to basically uh, essentially feed that ego-based fear. So Julie's point was great. When you feel that first negative thought creeping into your head, Just look at the negative thought jumbling around in your head. Don't analyze it. Don't judge it. And just say, hello, Mr. Negative Thought, or however you want to actually say this. I actually, when I have that, that I'm overcoming myself, I'm a little bit more direct, and there might be some profanity involved. But I always ask Mr. Negative Thought to get the heck out of my head. And you can do the same thing. By allowing that negative thought to manifest, you really will You'll, you'll end the opportunity for you to have more, uh, for you to essentially welcome in the type of thinking that you need to create what you want in life and in your business. So it's very, very powerful for you to take the time to slow yourself down and look for the little ego triggers. Look for the little ego thoughts. We gave you some hints on it today. The I words, the, you know, anything that's focusing inward on what you say and what you feel and focus outward on how you can be of service to other people. I, I don't know, honestly, guys, I don't know why stuff works this way. I don't know why um, you know, we're all wired this way. I, I just don't. Uh, Julie and I have studied this. We've really, really spent, I don't even know how much time researching all this, reading about it, 
talking to, to doctors, talking to people that are in universities, reading certainly lots and lots of books. You know, and, and the reason that we ingested all this is for our own information to improve ourselves, obviously, but so we can become better coaches. Because the conventional way of overcoming fear, and what you'll hear a lot of people say is, feel the fear, do it anyway. Okay, well, that will work for a little while. But the reality of it is, is the fear doesn't go away with the doing. The fear is still there. And so you might overcome that particular hurdle because you felt the fear and did it anyway. But what's nice is if you can build a long-term strategy to make it so that this psychological ego-based fear never manifests in your life, or if it does, you can actually put an end to it quickly and effortlessly. So on tomorrow's radio show, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to get to our specific five points on what you can be doing, and they're very specific, practical, easy-to-follow points. No mystical stuff, which won't require any you know, witchcraft or alchemy. This is all stuff that all of you guys could take immediate action on. So your homework from today's show, listen to this show again. The second homework assignment I have for you is write a list of what you're fearful of in the real estate business and tell me how much better your life would be if you were to overcome those fears. What are your fears that you're experiencing? I'll tell you some of your fears that you need to be recognizing is your fear of stop doing like buying buyer leads. Some of you are stuck in this psychological paradigm where you keep on buying these buyer leads because you're fearful of stopping. Stop it. It's a waste of money. Okay. So some of you guys need to really write down what you're fearful of in the real estate business because we are your real estate coaches. And then write down next to it what would happen if you were to overcome those fears. We're going to pick up where we left off uh, today, tomorrow, and we're going to give you the actual five practical points. In the meantime, guys, if there's anything we can ever do for you, any way we can ever be of service for you, see, we live what we say, what do you do? You request a free coaching call at freecoachingcallsforagents.com, freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Don't forget to request your free book, a uh, free copy of Think and Grow Rich. Um, in this, you know, again, it's out of, our book is out of print on Amazon.com, and I just decided to start giving it away opposed to selling it. And included with that is our, uh, we call it real estate treasure map, but it is a very comprehensive business plan. In sh uh, today's show description, you can click, click the link and download both, or you can email me directly at coachtimharris at gmail.com. If you're ready to take your coaching relationship to the next level, request a free coaching call at freecoachingcallsforagents.com, or just jump right to the head of the line and go over to timandjulieharris.com. Click on the button that says coaching and sign yourself up for coaching. Remember, every single coaching student starts with Julie or myself, and some of you guys will stay for us, uh, stay with us as your personal coaches, or in some cases, you might choose that you want to go to one of our other coaches. It's up to you. You're in control of that. And remember the other thing about our coaching, and you guys need to be on the lookout for this, is we do not have contracts. We are firm believers that there's no such thing as a level uh, coaching relationship if there's a long-term binding ball and chain contract. So you sign up with us to be your coach. If for any reason you're not 100% satisfied with the services provided, you can cancel. We are the only ones in the industry that offer that, guys. That's how confident we are that you won't cancel. In the meantime, we'll talk with you on the radio tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.